Good evening, welcome to the Board of Selectmen <coughs> meeting for June 14th, 2021. The time is now 6.30. If we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If we could please stay standing for one second so we can do a couple moment of silences. Diane Keith. Diane Keith passed away on June 1st. A longtime resident of Abington, Diane retired from the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department Bureau of Criminal Investigation where she was the executive assistant to the director. Prior to that, Diane was executive secretary to the Board of Selectmen from 1976 through 1989. After retirement, Diane volunteered at the Abington Senior Center, which she loved. She served as president of the Abington Senior Association and served on the Friends of Abington Seniors for many years in various capacities. She worked on many political campaigns. Diane loved cooking, music, dancing, bowling, reading, and family gatherings. Diane will be missed by her loving family and many friends. And Nancy Cavanaugh. Nancy Cavanaugh passed away on May 21st, a former resident of Abington. She served on the planning board, the Council on Aging, and led the South Shore Senior Chorus. Nancy had many interests but her passion was music, and she graduated with a major in music from Wheaton College and was administrator of the music section within the Department of Humanities at MIT. She leaves behind a wonderful family and many friends and will be greatly missed. Thank you. All right, public announcements. Alex Hagerty, do you have any? Yes, I have uh, two public announcements, Mr. Chairman. I want to congratulate the graduates of Abington High School, class of 2021, for their hard work, determination, and impressive achievements. The class of 2021 has proven to the Abington community that their leadership, kindness to help others, talent, and greatness will prosper for years to come. The class of, 2020, uh, class of 2021 faced numerous obstacles that no other Abington graduating class has ever encountered in their junior and senior years before. However, despite the COVID-19 pandemic, the class of 2021 rose above every challenge with their spirits held high and achieved success. The graduates found new and creative ways to make their senior year incredibly special. As a leader for the town of Abington, I am immensely proud of the class of 2021, and I want to follow their example. May their journeys lead to tremendous prosperity. Congratulations to the Abington class of 2021. And my last announcement for today's meeting is this one. Abington, we are in the month of June. And as the town of Abington's first openly gay selectman, it is with sincerest pride that I colorfully acknowledge the celebration of Pride Month. Pride Month was founded to honor the June 28, 1969 Stonewall Uprising, also known as the Stonewall Riots, that ignited the gay rights movement. We celebrate Pride Month as society's reminder that every life is treasured and that love and acceptance are the values we hold dear. Our LGBTQ people matter. Our uniquenesses brightens our world like a rainbow. History has fluctuated with society's acceptance of gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender people. Even as we sit here today, 69 countries around the world criminalize homosexuality. No human should be harmed, jailed, or especially killed for being themselves. That is why it is vitally important to advocate for support, acceptance, and love for each other. For me, Pride Month isn't about fabulous outfits, extravagant parades, or corporation advertisements. It's about equality. Of course, there is much more work still to do, but thanks to the generations of patriots, equality continues to grow. 
Our society is stronger when we are inclusive. My message to those who are struggling with their identity and want to shine, let your colors shine out proud. Never let your fear stop your happiness. People accept, support, and love you. It's human nature. This Pride Month, remember to love one another, accept one another, and be proud to be you. Thank you, Abington. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Anything Mike, can else? you top that? No. no. <laughs> but I do have one. Uh, the Friends of the Library will be holding a mini book sale on Wednesday, June 23rd from 4.30 to 6.30. The Friends are inviting people to eat and read and shop book trucks under the library portico while they are here for the food truck event. They'll also be promoting summer reading and registering Abington residents for library cards under the portico at the same time. Uh, any information can be found at abingtonpl.org. And I just have one. The Hug Foundation so annual celebrity softball tournament will be held on June 26th behind Beaverbrook Elementary School. We weren't able to do it last year because of COVID. So um, if you've been there before, you know it, it's free to anyone to come and watch the games. Uh, there will be some celebrities there that will sign autographs and take pictures. And uh, it's free for all spectators. And uh, there will be a after party cookout at the Knights of Columbus afterwards. So um, you're also invited there. I have one um, a message from Adam Gunn. Adam is a director of veteran services for the town of Abington. He wanted us to share a message about Flag Day. Flag Day is today and Americans should reflect on the foundations of our nation's freedom. The flag of the United States means different things to many different people. The flag of the United States represents freedom and has been an enduring symbol of the country's ideals since its early days. Americans should remember their loyalty to the nation, reaffirm their belief in liberty and justice, and observe the nation's unity. The American flag, also nicknamed as Old Glory or Star Spangled Banner, has changed designs over the centuries. It consists of 13 horizontal stripes of red, top and bottom, alternating with white, with a blue rectangle and the canton bearing 50 small white five-pointed stars. Each of the 50 stars represents one of the 50 states in the United States, and the 13 stripes represent the original 13 colonies that became the first states in the Union. Today we should talk about our great flag with our friends, family, and kids. Discuss the significance of it flying high and what it means to you so we can honor it for many more years to come. Thank you. Thank you. I have none at this time. Uh, next is public comments. Does anyone have any public comments for anything on the agenda, any agenda items, um, or old business? Come up now, uh, state your name and your address. Yeah, there's an agenda item. Should I wait to talk to them? You can come up and speak now if you'd like. Just state your name and address, please. My name is William Creighton, 53 Vineyard Road, and I'm, uh, I want to talk about the agenda item of uh, Helm Street. I don't know if you want to do it now or wait to that time on the agenda. Is, is it under the old business section? Is that what you're yes. discussing? Yeah, you, you can speak now. Okay. There's one in, uh, I did receive an email from the town manager basically implying that you've already made a decision on my complaint. Yeah, I actually did send him out a copy of um, our correspondence from KP Law. Okay. So it probably was a bit premature to send him um, the the memo with it, but um, I did send him the correspondence, which we should discuss. Okay. Um, we're going to be discussing that tonight, but do you have anything to speak on that now? or? I do. Uh, first, the attorney's letter. I don't know if you have a copy of it. Yeah, we're going to discuss that, but is it what exactly? Um, I want to talk about the attorney's letter. Okay, I mean. Do you want to do that now or under old business? Well, at, I mean, at this time, this is a, an investigation was done, so we're going to be discussing that tonight, but um, I mean, there's, there's avenues for you to take at this time, but. 
Okay, I'm, I'm a little confused. I will address that letter right now or when you talk about Yes, go ahead, you can address it, but again, we're gonna, there is some options for you, so please address it. So the board has not made a decision on the complaint? We're gonna discuss that. This okay. is public, time for public comment. No, right no, now, just, we're going to discuss this letter, our investigation, what town council did for us. I know, but it's if just you want to discuss, if, if you want to discuss email your complaints or whatnot, you can do voice now in public comment, and then one discussion we'll talk about it then. So the attorney's letter did not address all the items in my complaint. Completely missed all the zoning issues that I have in the complaint letter. Um, like it says, the letter from attorney Donald Nagel. Uh, states without support that the property is located within a residential zone. This does not appear to be the case. Well, there's a house on the property. So a house, to me, is residential. There's a registered voter living in a house on the property. And I thought we couldn't have a house and commercial properties, businesses on the same property, like on Adams Street. But there's a residence with a registered voter on the property. Okay. So that leads me to believe there is that residential area. If you also look at it, lot number 64 on the property. If you look at the zoning map, the majority of that lot is in a residential zone. I don't know if the attorney looked at that zoning map. I got the zoning map from the old Colony Planning Council. Um, <clears throat> The attorney says it's business development. Well, the, the business development requires a special permit for open lot storage of registered transport vehicles. This, has the town issued that permit? I know I'm asking. Has the town issued a permit for that? And we'll talk about it in the discussion. Okay, well, all right. Uh, also, the zoning laws require off-street parking areas to be paved. That is not paved. It's the, uh, also it requires parking lots where large trucks are stored and visible from the street shall be screened from street view, which is not the case. You can see everything from Route 18. So the attorney didn't discuss any of that. Uh, and then the attorney's letter says, however, in any event, on August, uh, July 23rd, 2020, the zoning enforcement issued the zoning determination, basically declining Enforcement stating that the property is grandfathered and non conforming use. Grandfathered what? To be grandfathered, it has to be a business that was issued a permit. I have been to the town clerk's office. There are no permits on Helm Street. The properties on the right hand side are, are uh, addressed on Bedford Street, not Helm Street. The properties on the left hand side, like the auto body shop and stuff like that, they are permitted on. Bedford Street. So the town clerk told me there were no permits for any businesses on Helm Street. Okay. The lots are talking about. So how can there be a grandfathering if there's no statement of what the business was that's being grandfathered? Okay. Also, the building inspector made his decision on that on a Google satellite photo dated 2002. Well, the current owner who purchased lot 64 in 65, he purchased them after 2002. So how could those two lots be grandfathered when they were purchased after the determination when the grandfathering was? There was three lots. It also says the zoning determination, determination was never appealed. Correct, because we were trying to find out what the term grandfathering was. Okay. The building inspector kept refusing to tell us what, that, what was grandfathered. We haven't asked him for the permit for the business there. And he didn't come up with anything. And there really wasn't much communication. It was one-way communication with the building inspector. <clears throat> so how can there be any grandfathering when there's no business existed? There's no permits. There's no permits now. He's driven by. You see all sorts of boats, construction vehicles. There's no permits for any of that. And you can't tell me it's boat storage. This is boating season. This is prime boating season. All boats are in the water, except for maybe the boats are not storage. Maybe it's a different. That's not 
business. And then there's wetlands issues. The major property, there is no certificate of compliance from 2008. DEP gives a certificate of compliance. And they're refusing to give a certificate of compliance. And you talked to Mr. Greg DeSaiza from DEP, which I hope somebody here get a chance to talk to. You can ask him why the DEP will not issue a certificate of compliance. And he's telling us that the owner is supposed to file with the Conservation Commission on the other property about the fill that was brought in. There's no timeline to do this, but he is the chairman of that committee. So he knows the rules. And he's your representative. This board appointed him. So he is representing you in his actions with wetlands rules. Um, that's about all I have right now. And Thank All you. Right. Thank yes. you. Any other further public comments? Step right up. Just state your name and address. All right, Ronald Howe, 149 Walnut Street. Um, I just have questions on uh, the vote to approve auction of surplus land parcels. Um, I wasn't sure, uh, you know, if any of them might be excluded. You know when the when the vote is taken, um, you know such as uh, you know Center North School. And that, maybe that's not part of this. So there, there's only certain parcels, but the Center School, North School are not part of this current um, okay. plan to auction. So they, that may happen in the future, but it is definitely it's not part of this round. Okay. Is there a list available of what the parcels? Uh, there'll are? be a list that will get posted. Okay. Um, but um, yeah, those two we didn't include in it. So okay. that, that's for future discussion. Because yeah. there's also a couple of larger parcels that I don't know if the Avenue Affordable Housing Committee might be interested in looking at for, for the, working on their program. Yep. Agreed. Okay. Thank you. Come right up. <coughs> Say your name and address. Again, just have to ask me again. <laughs> Shell Kearney, 652 Adams Street. Uh, about 662 Adams Street. So I got uh, Miss Quessel's report, or one of her reports, I should say, which is fine. I wish she was here, but that's unfortunate. Um, but I'm still waiting for the report from last July in 2020, Marshalls, or something saying he didn't do one or you can't prove it or just something about that investigation? Scott, do you have those? I don't know. Is that now? Um, it's in my meeting summary. You know, I yeah, I, I mean, as far as that goes, you there, didn't dispute it. there is, con I mean, there's, we have some letters from Marshall to the um, Mr. Sullivan asking him or, or demanding that he he uh, ceases and desist and goes in front of uh, the planning board for site plan <coughs> review uh, there's quite a few letters of correspondence you're welcome to have copies of them and I that would probably but be everything that, that we the, do have is that the investigation though into the 175 complaint that, that will be the correspondence that you'll see um, him going back and forth so Yes, during that time he is he is going through and doing his investigation. So that's the correspondence we have. We'll get you copies tonight, though. Okay. Uh, all right. It's unfortunate we didn't have the chance to appeal it though back in July. Uh, also, um, what about the 98 complaint? And are you guys have you guys considered ordering corrections or they're going to have to discuss that tonight? That's a discussion that's tonight. Just if you have anything with new with this, yeah. we'll have a discussion. But this well, is public comment. So if you have confused. anything, you I want thought to it was say. public comments about what's on the agenda. It, it is yes. We're going to have a discussion tonight about that, but we're not there yet. We're just in the public comment section. Okay. I guess I'll wait. Thank you. Um, any other further? Yes. Hi. Yeah, Kearney, 652 Adams Street. I, I, I didn't really catch it. So 
are we going to be able to come back up and speak during the during the discussion? No, we just uh, so discussion we, make the, so we make the comments now and then you guys yeah, discuss. And, later. and again, if, okay. there's any, if there's anything new, anything you have to say, go ahead. Okay, but so we're going to have a discussion tonight as, yep. as uh, Michelle already got the. All right. Part so so last time we appeared in front of you guys, I I gave you a bunch of very detailed questions. Did you guys get a chance to read them? Um, because I don't have any answers. Okay, and again, uh, we. We going to we're going to discuss that tonight with the investigation what happened. But is there anything new that you want to talk about right now? Um, just yeah. So so we got we got the determination from town council on on the grandfathered use the non-conforming use or the conforming use on a not obviously it seems like zoning must be an a la carte menu where you can pick and choose what you have to conform to. Um, so is that the official zoning decision on this property? That is our investigation. That is our response to you from the Board of Selectmen. So, okay, so. And, and again, you'll hit, we'll talk about it tonight. We'll talk about the investigation that was asked and that we conducted and, and that this now we had a response, which you've already received. But right yeah. now this is just public comment for anything on the agenda. If there's anything new, please but, talk well, to us about it. If not, we're going to have a discussion on basically everything and Okay, go but the, the, the response doesn't answer any of our questions. And there's avenues that you can take for that. But tonight we're going to discuss the investigation and okay. go from there. But there's avenues that you can take on that to okay. go from there. Uh, meaning going to the to yeah, the ZBA. I mean, yeah, I mean again we're in public comment, but you could have, you know, you could do if he's not conforming, right, you could do his own and complaint through the building department, which you know Speech to us through the here. building department. Um, you could reach out to the planning board to discuss the issues with the approved site plan. You could file an appeal of the investigation with the Zoning Board of Appeals um, or discuss with your lawyer you okay. know, that's, avenues to take. That's what I was looking for. We okay. can appeal this to the ZBA. W what's that? We can ap appeal this yes. to the Zoning Board. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Any other further public comment? All right. So the time is 6.55. Uh, we had a public hearing at 640 for a request to transfer an all alcohol common Victoria license to Tiki Garden to Two Gals Sports Bar and Grill Incorporated and new entertainment license at 201 North Quincy Street. Do we have a motion to open this? I'll make a motion open the public hearing. Second. Motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 All right, it's now open. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Attorney Tom Truax of Salem, Massachusetts, here on behalf of the proposed corporate transferee. Uh, with me directly to my right is Carol Rodriguez. She is the president of the corporation. She's also a 50% shareholder, and she's also the proposed licensed manager. And directly to her right is her, his, his, excuse me, is Grace Rodriguez, that's uh, Carol's wife, um, who is a 50% uh, shareholder in the corporation as well. Um, the underlying transaction is pretty straightforward, is a purchase of the assets of the Tiki Garden, um, including the Section 12 restaurant all alcoholic beverages license. <clears throat> this is a cash deal, there's no bank financing, no seller financing at all. Um, as for experience, both Carol and Grace come before you with many, many years of experience in the food industry. Um, Carol comes before you with over 33 years of experience um, having worked as a franchisee, uh, Dunkin' Donuts franchisee for 13 years, and as a district manager of Dunkin' Donuts for over 33 years. Um, Grace comes before you with about 36, almost 36 years of experience in the restaurant business, um, having previously owned two restaurants, one for five years, another for two years, and in the other 30 uh, some odd six years, um, she also worked at four other restaurants, all of which uh, were alcohol serving restaurants. Um, <coughs> She is also a Johnson & Wales Culinary School graduate, and she'll be in charge of the kitchen and uh, work in the back. In terms of the uh, operation of the business, um, both will be de uh, devoting their full-time energies um, to this uh, new endeavor, and um, they will, as the name implies, this will be a, uh, a sports bar, um, different from the Chinese restaurant that was before. The initial hours will be uh, Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sundays from 6 to 2. Obviously, in some of those off hours, they can't serve alcohol, and they're aware of that, but they'll still be serving meals. 
<coughs> we did notice from the current licensee license that uh, there was a 1 p.m. to 1 a.m. Uh, license hours on Sundays and since the statute does allow a 12, 12 noon opening on Sundays we would respectfully request that the board would consider a, a 12 p.m. Uh, opening for alcoholic beverages on Sundays. Um, as for layout, they plan to keep uh, basically the same for the time being. This is going to be pretty much a, uh, uh, a facelift. Um, the main reason for buying the, uh, the, this location was for the assets of the corporation, assets of the business, as well as the liquor license. Um, finally, all staff will, they intend to have approximately six staff two behind the uh, in the kitchen and three on three or four at the um, out in the um, uh, restaurant area and all will be required to be tip certified um, and uh, and that's about it glad to answer any questions you may have thank you we'll open up to the board if anyone has any questions concerns comments so you plan on closing both the kitchen and the bar down at 10 p.m. at night I mean, we would like to keep the license as is, except for the Sunday hours, but they just want to see how things go at the beginning, and, and the hours are going to be reduced at the beginning just to see how things, how the customer base is, how they react to the uh, the, the new location, the new, the new concept here. Just be aware that you'll have to come back in front of us if you want to extend that from 10 p.m. Right, but I, my only my only point to the board is that the current license is until 1 a.m. Monday through Saturday. The I'm current sure. liquor license, yes. Right. Yep. But Again, I'm, I'm not sure how Ab Abington does it, but we'd like to keep the license hours the same. The operating hours projected at the beginning will be to 10 p.m. Well, you can keep the license, but you can close open and close whenever you want. Right. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. what our... That's no, I would proposal. suggest keeping it the way it is, yes. Yeah. yeah. Any other comments from the board? There is the issue of the... There's an entertainment request, too. Oh, there also is an entertainment license before the, uh, the board. Um, this is for uh, televisions and for... Uh, Jukebox. Jukebox. <coughs> Excuse me, jukebox. If I take that after the public hearing. Yeah. Okay. Board has no further questions. I have no questions. No questions for me. Nope. Um, does anyone, any residents here, speak on it? Any Just a Yankee mask, but... Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's okay, I'm from New York, it's all right. Someone else. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. We just have to do this. I'll make a motion. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, go right ahead. You can please step up to the microphone. Just, we, just, just so right, we can hear you. Thank step you. right up here and say your name and address, please. Uh -huh. <laughs> Hi, my name is May Lai. I'm the owner of Tiki Garden for 44 years, wow. and I'd like to retire. The town, <laughs> the town, the firemen, and the police department have been great through me all these years. I have no complaints. I'm just getting old, and I'd like to retire. And I hope that these people will get the same respect that you've given me in all these years. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Did a motion to close? Yeah, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. I'll second. Okay. Motion and a second. I'm all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Let's close. I'll entertain a motion. Uh, looks like we'll do two motions for the economy with two license and then we go to the entertainment license. Yeah, I'll make a motion to um, approve the transfer of the all alcohol common vehicle license from Tiki Garden to Gal Sports Bar and Grill. I'll second that motion. All right. Um, any further discussion on that? All, right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. And I'll make a motion that we approve the application for entertainment license for Carol Rodriguez, Two Gals Sports Bar and Grill. Second. 
Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Good unanimous. luck. Thank you very much. When do you uh, think you'll open up? We're shooting for August 1st. We still have to uh, finish our obligation for our government jobs. Okay. We are shooting for an open day August 1st. All right. Well, let us know. Sure. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. 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 Okay. Um, thank, you. Is, thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Time is now 7:03. We have 6:45 p.m. Uh, public hearing for a request for a new commercial garage license by Eduardo de Oliveira, doing business as Columbia Auto Collision Incorporated, 761 Bedford Street. Um, I have a motion to open that hearing. I'll make a motion to open the hearing. <coughs> we have a second on that. Second. Motion and a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Motion is open. Do we have anyone here to speak on that? Just step up, say your name and address, please. Eduardo de Oliveira, 761 Bedford Street, Abington. How's it going? You want to tell us a little bit about? All right. Um, I own Auto Body Shop business for almost 10 years now. We located over in Whitman, called Columbia Auto Body. And um, we're kind of expanding more, and uh, we just found this location probably like almost a year ago. And um, we like to bring our business here to Abington. And we're here to ask the departments that we need to operate in the business there. Okay. So is this the old Damon Pontiac? Yes. So your property is the Damon Pontiac and then across the street as well? No, just the left side of Damon Pontiac. The just the shop. left side? Yes. And you can fit 158 cars on that? No, the whole parking lot there might fit 158 cars. Not then I want to put 158 cars there. Well, that's what you're asking us for. Oops, so must is confuse. the car license on the property? It is. So we need something showing the separation of the vehicles, uh, where your vehicles are going to be and where the used cars are going to be. As right now, there they are all one big lot, but we designated the back line for the cars for the body shop, and uh, but it's not 158. Probably we missed yeah, information we here. We don't need more than like 30 cars. Parking there right now. Let's see. We require every business that has a combination of used cars and repair or auto body to have a plot plan showing the designated spaces for your business as well as the used car right. business. And I don't see a plot plan here at all. We don't have the plot plan, yes, we don't. Uh, we can provide that to you guys for the next year. Um, and we don't know what the license. The license they have is unlimited, unlimited uh, license there, as I know, because I've been talking to them. But our, we can bring up a plot plan for you guys with the designated park for down the water shop. Typically, what they do is. I'm totally not against this. I'm. I, I want to. I want to approve it for you. But we've made everyone else in this situation give a plot plan of where the used car business is and where the auto body business is. All right. So. I think we're going to need that. We could, I mean, if the rest of the board wants, we, we can continue this to our next meeting. You think two weeks would be enough time for you to? Yeah, two weeks would be enough time. I can have the, the engineer like draw a plot plan, and the, they might have actually there. He might they, have it. Yeah, with the they have cars. all the cars, yeah. so they might yeah, have it. We just need to show where's the body shop and where's the, their cars. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I'm not sure about this 
garage licensee, though, but I mean, it does say you, you're at requesting 158 cars. Okay, do, the, do you have a copy of that? Yeah. Please. Thank you. He says 150 monthly, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking what he was probably thinking. Oh, they were thinking uh, was total. total. Right, three a day. Right, exactly. Right, but yeah, I, I can't approve that and then have 158 cars on the lot. Oh, so, so, yeah. so yeah, that would be like at one turn given around. time, yeah, how many? Turn around. Turn around. Yep. Yeah, okay. right. So so what we're looking for, the number of cars for repairs, like at one given time, how many cars would be on the oh, property? Oh, like one, and, and one, yeah. okay. Right. Okay. I how many cars are in there for repair? How many will fit inside the building? How many you'll be storing outside? Okay. How many employees and how many customers? Do you want me to redo the application? Continue. Leave it open. Um, just reopen it. Yeah, I mean, you can just amend this application, right? Just, yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we'll just uh, I would hold there. off until you get the wow. site plan mm -hmm. and see how many cars the used car business is going to have. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I mean, if you can work on 10 or 15 at a time, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, and then, you know, you might be up to 20. Yourself, yeah, that's average. You know? that's so. Yeah, because I put monthly on that. It's over 150 monthly, so I thought it was just a turnaround time. Okay. okay. So I'll, I'll just make a motion at this time that we continue this meeting until Ju uh, June 28th, at, um, say 640. All right. Anything. That, okay, yeah, hopefully if you can get that get to in us, there. Then we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we should be able to approve it. So it'll be the same time, two weeks, Monday night, and then assuming you have all that stuff, we'll be able to vote on it. No. And, we'll and you'll amend that? We don't have to, you'll amend the um, application? Uh, you can, uh, we can no, amend you, it up there. Yeah. Yeah. We can amend you it. bring up your plot plan, you can amend it up there, we'll initial yeah. it. Perfect. Okay. So right. we have a motion, do we have a second? S second. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank, Thank you. See you in a couple of weeks. Thank, 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 Thank you. All right. Okay, so next up on the agenda is old business. Um, update on 0 and 22 Helm Street, 662 Adams Street, and North Quincy Street. Scott, do you want to? Uh, so you did have several... Uh, pieces of correspondence from Amy Quessel at KP Law regarding these three properties. Um, the first one, zero, and 22 Helm Street. Um, we sent along uh, all the information that we had actually on, on uh, zero and 22 and 60, 62. Uh, anything that uh, was down in the building department, we forwarded along to Amy Quessel and she did a review of what was there and came up with her uh, memos to the board. Uh, as far as 022 Helm Street, most of the correspondence was also uh, supplied by Sean Riley to uh, my office and prior to that to the building department office. And um, it, it spelled out the, the grandfathering provision. When a property is considered grandfathered, it's because it had been in existence prior to uh, the zoning change or the zoning creation. So depending on when zoning actually came in town, um, whatever had been the use of that property up until that point would be considered grandfathered. So, And then if they changed and there was a zoning and there was a, a business that was, you know, in place and they changed the zoning, uh, typically that zoning or that use that was in place prior to the zoning would be considered grandfathered. So it would, it would basically the idea is it prevents a town from creating something or creating a law that would take away somebody's previous rights that they already have. Um, so you have the analysis in front of you on both of these items. I think specifically uh, with the first one was 022 Helm Street. Um, the, it appeared that it, to us that it had been grandfathered, that this property was used as some sort of a storage prior to the a zoning change. Um, everything that we could see, or at least coming from uh, Marshall's office, there was a letter that went out to Mr. Crichton in the past. Uh, as far as whether there's any uh, LLC set up or whether there's a... Um, 
you know, a business name or we don't have that information. I don't have that information. Apparently the town clerk doesn't have that information. Um, you know, why not? I don't know. I don't know if it wasn't requested when this went in. Uh, if it, again, if it had been there prior to some sort of a zoning change, it, it's been there for quite a while. Uh, again, this is a, a, a determination on the use. It's really not whether it's properly situated with the Secretary of the Commonwealth. Um, but that being said, this matter in the, the next matter, um, there's, a, there's an ability now, there's been a request for um, a determination, and this, is, this would be it, and there's the ability for this to be appealed to the Zoning Board of Appeals or to a, a court. I think uh, the proper form would be to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals first. So um, the residential house that's on Helm Street, um, that was pre-existing? From what I understand, the everything there was pre-existing, correct? I see. The storage, the use of the storage, and the use of the house. Okay. <clears throat> so, if the residents wanted to, if we were to vote to accept Amy's um, decision here, the residents could appeal to the zoning board. Correct. Okay. Okay. What have any further comments on Helm Street? No. So do you want to move on to um, what's what's the situation for um, open salvage um, for our town? Like open so, storage? Wait. Well, yeah. Yeah. Or like a, a salvage facility. Well, uh, like junkyard would yeah, like need a, junkyard, a class. Exactly. I don't know if we, I don't know that junkyards like, are allowed. I don't know that yeah. this. I don't know that we're talking about a junkyard here. To be yeah, quite honest okay. with you, from the correspondence that well, we've you might gotten. not like the looks of it, but I mean, it's not. They're not stripping vehicles and selling the parts off, so it's not a junkyard per se. Okay. Um, no, I'm just wondering with all the um, mechanics there. I'm just I'm just trying to get a clear picture. Yeah, I, again, I, I don't know what the provisions are for a junkyard or the allowable use of a junkyard. I think it would probably be with special permit or in this particular case, if it was a junkyard prior to the creation of the zoning article, um, mm. it would probably be grandfathered, but I, I don't believe that's the case here. I think it's just storage. I believe a junkyard would need a class three license and I don't know if we have any of those issued. Mm -hmm. I think before we make any decisions, um, or hardcore decisions, that we make sure that this isn't for or licensed for a junkyard or w whatever the situation may be. You're not licensing anything tonight. Oh, oh I know. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm just putting it out there. Okay. Any further comments from the board on Helm Street? Do you want to move on to 662 Adams Street? Um, so similarly, 662 Adams Street. Um, uh, you had your chance to speak earlier. At the Speaking on the matter, I just thought I had something to the discussion. I know, and that's why I had public comment earlier. I, I let you speak then and say what you need to say on the matter. You did give a good amount of um, questions and some information for us, and I appreciate that, but right. at this time, we just... But how do we comment ahead of time if we don't know what you're going to discuss? Yeah, we didn't know which way the discussion was going, so how can I... I Mr. Chairman, yeah. I, I, I think it would be beneficial hearing okay. from too, the public. I'm not... I, don't, I, I just think it would be uh, more helpful for us. Okay. How does the board feel? I mean, what, we're not voting on anything. Yeah. Because I, I mean, we can. You, at, at the end of this, I, I we we'll would be to voting accept to accept. Yeah. yeah. I would recommend you either vote to accept it or not accept yeah. it. I have no problem if um, they wanted to speak, but, you know, we've heard everything for a long time from everyone. So if it's anything new, then that would be fine. But if you're going to rehash, 
everything. One question. Okay. Again, Bill Creighton, 53 Vineyard Road, Navington. What's the name of the business that's operating there right now? I've been to the building inspector, the town clerk, the town manager, and the fire chief. Nobody can tell me the name of the business that is operating there right now. I believe there are tenants for the business. In the names I have heard, I checked the Massachusetts State Secretary of State Corporations database, which everybody who has a business in the state is supposed to be registered with. And a couple of names I've heard, I went on there and checked, and they are not listed. So what is the name of this business that's operating on the property? I, whatever Michael Noonan is operating under. I mean, he must be collecting rents from the people that are parking there. I have not been able to locate that on the state corporation database. Maybe he's not a corporation. It's he can be a DBA. No, it, it I mean, was that's not really use. our issue yeah. here. But what we looked it, at it, was the use and whether it was we don't, it or not. The complaint it, was on the, the use of the property. Yeah. Not on the use of the business. Owns it. It's on the use of the property. And that's, that's what you asked. And, and that right. was a complaint. That's, that's what we had That's part of it. Like you're just granting a permit to somebody to operate those operating hours. We're not granting a permit. Again. <laughs> I know you're not granting a permit, but you, can't, you don't even know who's operating this. There's no operating hours for this business. That's why there's a truck starting up at 4 o'clock in the morning waking everybody up, because there's no operating hours to, to prevent them because from Because they're not operating a business. They're parking vehicles there. They're waking the whole neighborhood up. I, I understand that, but that they're, they're not operating a business. They're not repairing vehicles. They're parking trucks there, and they're starting up, up in the morning and driving away. There's and at the end of the day, they're parking back there. There's work. In addition to that, there are other tenants. There's other work going on there, moving of dirt and stuff like that. Who's the property owner? What's the business name? We all know who the property owner is. <clears throat> it's, it's, a, it's a trust. Okay. But so that's who owns the, it then. What's you the just name? answered your question. But what's the name of the business? Whatever the trust is. That's the trust that owns the property. Oh, that's, there's a business. Okay. Wouldn't it be beneficial for the town to know what exactly kind of business is going on on this property? I mean, I, I, don't, I don't want to be skeptical or anything, um, but, you know, we had a similar situation with North Quincy Street where we weren't sure what was going on uh, behind the scenes there. And we didn't know what businesses were renting there um, from the owner. Uh, I, I, just, I, I, I just advise caution. I believe the fire chief has been up there and has inspected it and has been in touch with the uh, owner of the trust. So, I mean, uh, he didn't seem to have an issue with it the last time he spoke here. Yeah, I think we're going a little off subject on the use. That's what we're looking at right now. This is right. the, use, the use on the property right. Right. is allowed, correct? We're not looking at what business, what would the it, use exactly. of the property. It was the use. It really doesn't matter who owns it or what the name is on it. Yeah, yeah. Can I ask a question about the use? Yes. yes. Uh, Rick Collins, 74 Orange Street. I'm a member of the planning board, but I'm speaking on behalf of myself, not the board itself. 22 Helm Street is a residential property, according to the assessor's map. It is a residential use. There apparently is somebody living there. You cannot, under our bylaws, have a residential and a commercial use in this district at the same time. If it's being used for residential use, you cannot also use it for a commercial purpose. If you're using it for a commercial purpose, you cannot also use it for a residential use. This is the same issue we had on Adams Street. There are some districts in town where you can have a joint use. The, the uh, our, our transportation, uh, transit-oriented development district, our uh, business district of um, like North, North Abington Center, you can have multiple uses. In this district, you cannot have two uses on the same property. If somebody is in that house living there, it can't also be a commercial property. So I don't know what the situation is. So unless, of course, they were both pre-existing non-conforming uses. So if they both were in existence together prior to the zoning that said you can't do that, 
than they would be grandfathered. Do you know when the, the zoning applied here that changed mm -hmm. for this use? Wouldn't know. The difference with this in, in, in the Adam Street property would be that the Adam Street property was currently being used as residential, which was the non-conforming use. Right. And when they wanted to change it back into and become conforming, then they could no longer continue the non-conforming use. The change of use had triggered it. But in this case, up on Helm Street, the contention is that the uses up there were pre-existing, both of them non-conforming. Going back to the 50s when the zoning code was first adopted? It's the information that I have from, that was given from Sean Riley and from the building department that I sent off to okay. KPLA. Just making sure. So, so just to clarify further, Amy Quessel, our town council, looked into this, reviewed everything and, and wrote this for us. That is correct. So our town council is, this is their stance after review. Hey, you can get it. Um. Just state your name and address one more time. Shelter <laughs> 652 Adam Street. So based on the, uh, what you just read, um, about the grandfathering of the non-conforming use. That means it's in existence and whatnot. Um, what's, there's a difference between a conforming use and an allowed use. Do, do you see what I'm saying? You can't differenti differentiate between an, an allowed use and a conforming use. That 662, it's non-conforming lot, so an allowed use would have to conform, otherwise yeah. it's Yeah, but we're, we're not, th it's that debate is not something that I'm gonna get into you, into with you, that was, that's addressed in this memo, and we can go down back and forth, the rabbit hole of that all night long, and we'll not, dis we'll not agree. Your best bet that. is to take this determination, if the board accepts it, and file an appeal. Okay, I, I just feel like we're both getting two different answers on the, grandfathering protections that's what i don't understand one as scott said it, helm street was grandfathered yeah adam street they went for a change of use so would which it be voided allowed, the residential wouldn't the allowed use have to conform to the zoning bylaws on on your property no, on, on my neighbor's property wouldn't the allowed use have to conform to be a the the use. use does conform. The use that is an allowable use in that to, industrial district. Use, but it, exactly. The the use conforms to zoning. You're saying that the dimensions of the lot do not conform to zoning, but the use does conform. But, but aren't How can the use conform if the lot doesn't? The lot. It's, it's not an alcar. It, it is. Well, and then that should be the basis of your appeal. I can only go by what town council put out here. But I just feel like they're, the Helm Street is the opposite of ours, and it's, it's I mean, by, by Ms. Wessel's logic, then we could turn our, our property into like a hotel, a swimming club, a fraternity, a golf course, like, because technically would be grandfathered, right? Is that an allowable use? At an industrial In your... property, yeah. You go. All right, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Anything further from the board on zero Helm no. Street? Zero twenty two Helm. Okay. Scott, do you want to go to six sixty two Adam Street? Uh, I think we covered it. It was again. Again, it was. Um, That's separate from the one eighty. What's that? Go ahead. All right. So, so uh, as you can see in the letter, is understanding that it, the residential use of it was a pre-existing, non-conforming use. Um, the open lot storage of registered trucks and trailers for temporary storage is the allowable use. Um, they can't have in this particular case. 
um, changing the property from a pre-existing non-conforming use residential to a conforming use industrial change of use applies which states any non-conforming use is changed to a conforming use it shall not therefore be put into any non-conforming use um, basically what she's saying is what they're doing is if they're going to use it as their conforming use they have to discontinue the residential use she's prepared to send out a um, and I think I sent you a draft copy of a cease and desist letter for specifically for the um, residential use. And she also, um, in that letter, um, the memo to the board, Ms. Quissel does get into the, um, the property not meeting the dimensional requirements and therefore um, the use may not change from residential. Uh, but she does address this that the you know um, I, I don't know if Ms. Kearney brought up the powers versus building inspector case or if Amy was just putting it in here but she says that it, it is a different scenario the property is a pre-existing non-conforming lot and, uh, and in her opinion uh, dimension relief is not required to convert the use to a conforming use and here the conforming use is additionally not introducing any new dimensional non-conformities therefore in Ms. Quessel's opinion enforcement and that is not applicable okay. and again um, I understand that they obviously don't agree with this or with Ms. Quessel's assertions and um, they do have the ability to appeal this to the local board of appeals and then obviously into um, the courts courts um, yeah. so on Adam Street does the board have any comments or questions the only thing I have on Adam Street and it's actually 67 Oak Street um, that's the next issue that needs to be addressed um, uh, the owners 67 Oak Street never even showed up for the fill permit uh, with the um, planning board so I think that's something that uh, we may have to look into yeah, I believe um, I think uh, planning has sent that to town council so they have yeah uh, I just wanted to mention that though okay can, can I say anything, anything further on the hold on one second anything further from the board any questions any comments on this is there an existing um, cease and desist letter for uh, the uh, residential the use cease and desist letter on Adams was um, to get them to the site plan review which they've done they've completed a cease and desist letter will now be going out to say you cannot use it the residential portion of it that because one they've been using the house as yes. residential and now they can't anymore okay so when is that that's being? going out um, within the next couple of days okay yeah. and then so be served by sheriff okay can I just clarify yes that you guys are just trying to take a vote on what council's opinion was and whether they approve or disapprove you can go to zoning board and no, I just want to know if I'm getting it we were tasked we were asked we open an investigation we had town council look and do an investigation and they have given us a response town council for the for the town of Abington has given us a response per our request per a, an investigation that was asked inquired about we opened we did um, these are the responses and, th and that's what we're going over here uh, again um, if there's something going on, a zoning complaint can be put in through the building department. Um, they could reach out to the planning board to discuss the issues with the approved site plan. They could file an appeal of our investigation with the zoning board of appeals. Uh, or they could also, in first, probably talk to their own counsel, their attorney, um, and discuss their options, which we've talked about a little bit here. So we're, we're not trying to make it difficult we're just trying to say we're approving we, we're taking what yep. our council has advised us. we asked council to this they did they've given us a response we're just reviewing this in in taking a vote to approve it or not okay um, there is other whether, options for whether we approve this or not 
what what happens moving forward? It's if anyone doesn't agree with what town council said, they have the option to appeal to zoning board or, or courts or both or the planning board, I guess. Okay. But I would think from our standpoint, if we accept this case closed as far as we're concerned. We were we were asked to do an investigation. We did. We've concluded our investigation. This is the investigation. So we're we're um, we'd be taking a vote to approve that this is the investigation and this is the official response from the Board of Selectmen. So as you've heard, there's a lot of questions and there seems to be a lot of information here which can move forward if the parties choose to appeal and do their, okay. you know, what, what they want. So, and we've heard it tonight and, you know, that's like I think one of the members of the board said that's, you know, almost in a basis, their basis right there. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. We, we will be getting a written response from Marshall's investigation that we filed a complaint for last year. This will be all you're getting. Almost 54 weeks later. Right? This will be the response for all your, your this questions. This is it. Yes, yeah, so, so this, will be our, this will be our response. We do have some correspondence from Marshall that I did say we'll get it to you. We'll get some copies to you. Right, we will get that to you. Can we do that tonight before the end of the meeting? Or? The copies, sure. Email it to Actually, us or right. something if you want. Yeah. Uh, no, we, um, I'll, I'll get them copies of it. Okay. So yeah, that you'll yeah. get that. Um, whether yeah, it's email or tonight. Copies of the correspondence that we read out earlier. That's fine. That's fine. Just something okay. right here. Yes. Yep. And I think separately, though, um, I, I think you, if you guys vote on those two items separately, um, we do have the. I think I gave you the answers to the ninety-eight complaint that Michelle's brought up. Yes. And I think that. We'll probably deal with that right after because it is a separate complaint than these issues okay um, but I will to say that the other update that's part of that um, the North Quincy Street just to let you know that um, Sue managed to get everybody to sign and get everything um, that we needed for the court filing for that so um, it was like herding cats, but we got all the information together, so we managed to get it to get it back to uh, KP Law, and they'll be within the next day or so filing in Superior Court. Okay. okay. So on these, we'll we would entertain a motion, and then we'll go into this next. Yeah, I think you should do it separate. Okay. So you have in front of you the two res the responses from Town Council. Um, I would entertain a motion if we're going to accept them um, or any other motion. So I'll make a motion to accept KP Law's Fine. correspondence filing on uh, 0 and 22 Helm Street. Okay, the motion, do we have a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion on that? Um, um, just for you folks, just so you know, I'm not happy with it either, it, and I feel for you guys, I really do. But hopefully, by us closing this, you guys can now move on to your next steps, whatever that may be. Yeah. Please, yeah. We're, we're not giving up on you. I, I, I know. Like, I feel that way. I know. I know. I know. But this is how it works. This yeah, is the process. the process. It's a long process. And, I, you know, my heart goes out to you just... So yeah. I, you know, I just wish there was enforcement along the way for the last year or three months. Well, that Re regardless, that issue has uh, been resolved too. Okay. You know, so so I apologize. As, but well, I understand. Uh, so but further, we're, we're going to be discussing. Yeah. Very similar, but you guys are handling it very differently. So we have a again right. one of the agenda items that we'll talk about shortly when we get to it is inspectional services. So. Yeah. which we can and talk you can further and on that. like we've said we've talked about here tonight like you can appeal appeal this you know what wh however you see fit we pay town council to do an investigation and this is what she comes back with uh, I mean yes, we can't not have to accept that I pay <coughs> town council too that's so right take that advice and throw it away if you don't feel it's that way so at this time we have a motion and a second on the f on the floor uh, do we have any further motions Okay, I'm hearing none. So we have a motion and a second. Um, Tim's motion to accept 0 and 22 Helm Street. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Okay. We have 
401. Okay. So next would be 662 Adam Street. Do we have any motions on that? Motion to accept council's report. I'll, I'll second. Motion in a second. Okay. Any further discussion on 662 Adam Street from the board? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 4-1 again. Okay, and on North Quincy Street, we don't have to do anything. Okay. Okay, so on this. Yeah, so on the, the, um, what do we got, the chapter, the yeah, the 98 complaint that's been filed by um, Ms. Kearney. So um, the 98 complaint is, uh, and to read it to you, is on, upon the complaint of an abutter, the selectmen shall investigate the use of adjoining land, which, although within the allowed use under the zoning bylaws or health regulations, is alleged to be conducted in such a manner that, is, that it unnecessarily or unreasonably interferes with the use of quiet enjoyment of the complainant's land. So uh, what the board has to look at is, is the use allowed? And I think we've pretty much covered that in the memo from KP Law. Uh, plus they went through the site plan review. Um, and is it being, you know, the next question, is it being used in a manner that is unnecessarily or unreasonably interfering with the complainant's use of or quiet enjoyment of their land? Um, and then I think, you know, so that's sort of the discussion or the thoughts that you have to go down now is, um, you know, keeping in mind that it is an industrial zone, it's Route 58. Um, the property was approved or, or um, the allowable uses for storage. Um, so assuming they're in compliance with their site plan and what they're supposed to be doing, is it unnecessarily or unreasonably objectionable? And then if they're not in compliance and they're not doing what they're doing or what they're supposed to be doing, um, and then it is becoming unnecessarily um, or unreasonably interfering with the quiet enjoyment of the neighborhood, then you have to act upon it. So that's your task, and, and I think that that, is a, that was a separate um, complaint. Okay. okay, so on that um, discussion from the board, we've heard what Scott has to say in regards to that. Do we have any discussion? So we're just deciding if a storage facility on Route 58 is? Well, it's this particular one. Right. It's not a, you know, I mean, in, in if they were using it according to their site plan review, um, or are they doing things that they shouldn't be doing, which might, you know, if they're actually out there working, or, or um, you know, if, if he's doing more than just storage. I mean, the, the idea is, with his approval, that he can bring his trucks there, he can store them, he's not supposed to be working on them, he's not supposed to be acting as a mechanic. Um, you know, there, there shouldn't be, on a regular basis, constant traffic coming in and out of there. And if that is the case, then there are, you know, then that's an issue and there's probably sanctions that the board can take. Um, so how do we find out if that's an issue? Yeah, what do we have, please, 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 sir, not while I'm talking. Well, again, I think it, What has the building department done? They, you know, when, when they have gone by, they've reported to us that they haven't seen um, traffic coming in and out of there. I've gone by, I've seen um, usually one or two trucks there. Um, I, you know, I think we could bring Mr. Sullivan in and ask him what's going on. Um, again, he's recently been through the site plan approval. It's really just starting. I mean, what's been approved is beginning now. Okay. You know, so I think it may be more of a monitoring situation. Um, I think the complaints can come, you know, should be made through the building department, the building inspector. The building inspector has not received any complaints. Well, they've received numerous up until this point. Yes. Right, since the yeah, so since, site, new site you know, plan has no. been. But approved. something has been going on since. We, we the, made yeah. Clear for over a year no, 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 it's, it's well, got, since the site on. plan approval, 
The site plan approval was for storage of registered right. vehicles. Right. Since oh. then, has he been doing repairs? Yeah. Why don't you come up to the come up here for a second, yeah? And yeah, I'll try. Everything I'll try. before that doesn't but, matter. But again, this, we're, yeah. we're talking from the site plan approval. From May 27th. May 27th, yeah. May 27th until this current this day today. Still a family living in the house, and there's still work going on on a constant well, basis. We're, we're taking care of the family by yep. July 1st. That's yep. one but issue. Just, so just just what he was approved for as far as I'm I'm aware is an H3 storage of registered vehicles they're plow trucks he removes the plows from the trucks so now it's storage of equipment which needs the H5 usage in the special permit I believe it which, said equipment also. sorry I believe it said he could store equipment but not within 20 feet of the fence but not on the not on the approved site plan it's only an H3 usage sir again though this this complaint is going it, not so much as whether he's in compliance just in general, right. but is what he's doing there creating um, right. working on it, vehicles and running the vehicles. Yeah. And is it like is he that. making noise? Is he making it impossible for them to oh, enjoy? Let's read no it again. Upon it. the complaint of an embutter, the selectmen shall investigate the use of adjoining land, which although within the allowed use under the zoning bylaws, chapter 175, or health regulations, is alleged to be conducted in such a manner that is unnecessarily or unreasonably interferes with the use or quiet enjoyment of the complainant's land. Believe me, we wouldn't have been here this many times if it wasn't Yeah, happened. but like I said, that's all before May 27th. The issue now is if he's doing something he's not supposed to be doing since May 27th, yes, sir. you're going to have to present us proof and you're going to have to file it through the uh, building office. And that's not 100 percent. The way the way I'm interpreting it is, even if he's doing something he's supposed to be doing. Yeah, but if it's object, if it's, it's, yeah, if it's yes. creating, yes. Yeah. Yes. yeah, if it's creating. And what he's sense. supposed to be doing yeah. Yeah. should not create. So the but yeah. the next yeah. day after May 27th, uh, he has a video of him out there working on a truck. Correct. So. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I, I've, I mean, so, I've, so that's, guys come on I've, I've been so to the property. That's what we Four kids, I, trucks, I might take you up on it. Yeah. <laughs> so Alex that's Hagen, what we're going to need going forward. Yeah. If there's an issue, you're going to have to document it and file a complaint, and then we can handle it. Because what everything that happened before then is out of, out of our hands now. Okay, so do you do you need a new 91 complaint, or do you just need... No, this, this is officially no. an opening that, yeah. in my opinion... You've farmed your complaint. Okay. And I think now. So now you need if, proof. Now support it. If yeah. there's, yeah. Stuff, going if there's exactly. something going on, support it. Yeah. No problem. Beyond <laughs> what he's supposed so just, to be I mean, doing. Just, just the nature of the way he stores the plows separate from the vehicles. He's constantly breaking down and upfitting the vehicles, um, running stuff with a fork truck and whatnot. And we'll, we'll get you proof, but there's, he, it's not just. There were a couple of weeks where he was real close to a site pr plan approval, where his lawyer probably told him, hey, behave yourself, whatever, um, that it was actually quiet over there for three, four days a week. And it, you know, we could deal with that as long as he follows the, the, the buffer zones and all that other stuff, but it's not like that. It's just the nature of his business, upfitting the plows, breaking down the plows, repairing the plows, but moving equipment with the fork trucks. once a year, you know? I'm sorry? Take them off and put them on. I mean, that's... Shouldn't it be but something he's doing every day? Is he taking the plow it's, off, and is he taking it he on and off five or ten times a day? Or well, right what? now he's storing most of the trucks at 67 Oak because I imagine he's getting ready for his, his site work. That's but the plows, right the plows are all up against the fence, as well as the, the used truck bed that I've showed you multiple pictures of that he uses as a dumpster with oil filters and cables and all kinds of hazardous waste. There's a fuel tank in there. Um, I've got video of him pressure washing a fuel tank just about a week ago. Um, I'll, I'll send that. I'll send, I'll send everything. But there's no question it's still going on. It's going to go on. And, and is, the H3 usage does not allow the storage of the plows separate from the trucks. The, no equipment. He shouldn't be That's having fork trucks here. He shouldn't have, yeah. have bobcats, any of the stuff, any of the sundries, um, chemicals, fuel. Well, we're, we're going on two separate. We're, we're splitting here with this. We're, we're looking at the well. I'm just the uh, land. The yeah, I'm just going with it. He's not using it the way. It's he's understand what is. Just know that we're we're separating here a little bit from what the. What so this if reads. he's not abiding by the site plan, then you should contact the uh, planning board and file a complaint with the building We've, department, and you should uh, document if he's violating it, uh, and then report back to us, and then we'll call him in here. 
in the future i mean okay you you just want you just want documentation since may 27th exactly in accordance with yes chapter 98 this land use 98 section 98 chapter yep. one investigation by selectmen okay no problem nope. so we will just supplement that that app that yeah, so you, you've with, opened it with and, evidence. and again yeah so again I, I won't read it again but you know what i mean just we'll reference it to that's specific to this section 98 chapter one okay We'll, we'll just we'll get you some pictures and videos thank you thank you thank you thank you okay and i think that'll probably just go into old business yeah we'll put that and the grid has to read that on old business okay all right um so now that old business is <coughs> done the next up will be the vote to approve the minutes uh, from may 17th 2021 <coughs> I make a motion uh, to approve the minutes of May of the uh, meeting May 17th, 2021. Motion to a second. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'll abstain. All right. All right. Four <coughs> oh with one abstention. All right. So next up is food truck events. Request from music. Scott, do you want to briefly discuss this? Talk um, about this? Do you want to? Does anybody else want to? Oh, yep, yeah, sorry. I'm, my apologies. No, yes, I, I didn't know Katie was going to be here either. I was glad to no, see you were here. Um, <laughs> I saw it online. Okay, good. Minute, so I just figured I'd show in. It's nope, perfect. always interesting being here. But um, my name's Katie. I'm a food truck owner. I own the truck, LA Streets. I'm from Weymouth. Um, we're happy with the night. Um, you know, we're seeing a good crowd. We're getting really good feedback from everyone that comes. We're not having any parking issues. I know that there was a track meet last Wednesday mm -hmm. at the same time, which we were like a little nervous of in the beginning. And um, people kind of realized that they could park and walk in. And I think it's all working out. So now that we've had a good couple of weeks going, we would like to add um, live music to Wednesdays. When I say live music, it's just a guy or a, uh, you know, a lady or gentleman strumming on a guitar. Not too exciting, but um, you know, it, it definitely adds some niceness. People are, you know, kind of sitting and eating and picnicking, and it would just add a nice little, little bit more. Okay. And the music would start and stop at the same time as the food trucks. Yes. Yeah. And there's no, so it's not overly amplified or no. anything like um, that. Personally, we have music in Hanover at our Forge Pond Park night. Mm -hmm. I cannot hear it in my truck. Mm -hmm. um, with the generator going, like there's like a low roar from my truck and every truck and mine's more quiet than some of the others and I can't hear the music, but everyone else does. My dad comes every week um, to both Hanover on Tuesdays and Wednesdays in Abington. He loves it. He can hear it. <laughs> okay. But um, I can't, so I don't think it would cause any, you know, noise issues, but um, definitely just add a little bit more to the night. And is it solely acoustic or is it yeah, it's solely acoustic for sure. So what if any? I'll make a motion to approve it. A second that. Okay, motion and a second. Um, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Good luck. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so next up is the summer concert series um she was fine <laughs> again nothing in particular but if you guys want to get up and just talk about summer concerts and uh just gonna sing. <laughs> can no, you gonna sing to us tonight <laughs> and but usually have to have a couple cocktails first i haven't had <laughs> and i haven't had enough tonight um <laughs> <laughs> As the Board of Selectmen's liaison to the Summer Concerts Committee, thank you for that appointment. Um, I'm not as long-winded as Jan, and I'm also, also Dr. Peter McDonald is here, he's also on the committee. Nancy is, uh, Reed, you all know, is on the committee. Um, she's traveling tomorrow and she got her hair done, so obviously she can't go out in the rain. <laughs> so um, we have an exciting lineup for you, and I'm going to let Jan speak about it. Um, I just have one question um, and a concern about, we love music. We just want to make sure that the music for, we, we want to make sure that the, the trucks stay where they are and don't go onto the fields, you know, um, only because um, we were there last week and a lot of people, I saw some selectmen there too, there's a lot of dogs 
and we want everybody to enjoy the music in the evening and if they have dogs they can't go on the grass and they can't so we were just kind of wondering where the music was going to be from and we do have a suggestion because um, we spoke about an event on the portico at the library and there's power there so that would be a great and the acoustics would be great there you know in front of the oh, library yeah I, I got the impression they didn't need any no okay we just want we just had a concern because yeah, yeah. if you put someone on the stage there you're not going to be able to hear them you're no i don't i no. they didn't so get the impression that, that was, was all, it at all that yeah. was all so we just had yeah. a little concern about that because we spent a lot of money you know you'll know this probably the only field in abington doesn't have geese poop in it and <laughs> we spent a lot of money for that and and devices up there actually the schools <laughs> called this week to find out what we use for that well and i know they they, they stopped bringing the dog treat truck because um there were no dogs allowed those, yeah, yeah. Okay. so they right. they had that at, at griffin's um but they did stop bringing All right. it. and i told jan to kind of keep it you know it's been a long meeting you got a lot of stuff to do so <laughs> jan brawl thank you thanks ken hi jim i'm trying to look like nancy tonight she, she, let's do this this is just we did a schedule this year not a program just because of the uncertainty of when things were going to open up originally was going to be announced on May 29th that they were going from 200 to 250 outdoors. We can't have a $4,000 ban for 250 people. No, nope, not going to happen. And then all of a sudden, everything was going to go open up after we moved everybody to August 1st because that was going to be the second announcement. So then we had to move everybody back. So it's been kind of a bouncing around. Um, we could not get the community band in this year. Um, they're going to do a Christmas concert. That'll be the first thing they do. And the committee voted as a whole that holding kids night this year just probably isn't a good idea with 500 kids um, all over the place. So, um, and face painting and stuff that you really can't do right now. Uh, so we opted not to. So we kind of had to backtrack. We're not opening the end of June. Um, <coughs> didn't make any sense to open on July 4th because uh, yeah, nobody's gonna wanna be there. <laughs> so we're gonna open July 11th and we're gonna go through our regular um, season to the end of august which is the week before labor day so we moved everybody back from you know august 1st into early september back to the regular schedule uh we've got three returning bands five new ones the prices range anywhere from about 1200 dollars, and i think the most expensive is 4500 so we put a lot of time this is our 17th season we do wow. include last year as a season because we did do two concerts in the auditorium at the high school with the limited amount of people uh, we pre-recorded one for to show the next week, and Studio Two, the Beatles went live that night on Facebook from this auditorium here with the whole 750 people, and I think there were 10 people in the whole building. <laughs> no <laughs> clapping, no nothing. But it's funny because if you go to their website, they're using that now as a promo video. That's the awesome. one that was done here. So I think you'll be really happy. Um, we decided to open with Dale and the Duds this year. It just seemed like the right group. We always close with them, but because of everything that's gone on, everybody knows them. We, when I put first put out um, some requests for fundraising on Facebook, because we didn't do any in 19, we didn't do any in 20, <coughs> we had um, like reached like almost 7,900 people. The concert schedule's already reached 4,000. I hope they don't all come. Um, but we have uh, a very large venue, and uh, we do use loud music. Many people don't leave their homes because they can hear it, and they love it. Right. So um, I think it'll be a good season. I think people are craving, as with the food trucks and stuff like that, something. And um, you know, it seems like they've had a good response with that. We get an amazing response with the concerts. Uh, the Beatles have brought in the largest to date of 1,140 people. Wow. And that was only two-thirds of the field use. The whole left side of the field wasn't even touched or Riley Field. So, and the kids want to run out there and play. Anyway, I think it'll be a great season. We hope you'll be able to come. Um, like I said, uh, Dale and the Dud Studio Two um, and Duop Deville are the only returning bands. Everybody else is new. Uh, Hip Shot, Nancy, and I saw down at the launch at the Hingham Shipyard. I yeah. <laughs> we, yeah, excuse me, Peter, except for you saw one without us. We go to the launch at the Hingham Shipyard when they were having concerts. We've seen some really good stuff down there. Uh, the Reminiscence, they've been around as long as Dale and the Duds, but <laughs> their music is oldies, but it's very different from what Dale and the Duds does, so I think it'll be enjoyed by all. The Baja Brothers was kind of like a last minute fill in when uh, we had to switch things around. We had talked about bringing them, uh, we had talked about doing a uh, summer and winter concert, and they were the person that we were, the other group that we were looking for. They've been around, this is their 30th anniversary, we've been around a long time, but I think it'll be really fun with a little bit of Jimmy Buffett and Beach Boys and some other Absolutely. stuff thrown in. They sound like a real fun band. Um, again, the reminiscence, oldies, but I really liked them when we saw them in Hingham. They um, 
offer some history with some of the pieces they do, and it was stuff that I didn't even know, so it was kind of cool. Just a little bit, just a little bit different. Uh, Mark Briel, I found him on the internet. Guy is amazing. Again, they're celebrating their 30th anniversary. Never heard of him before, but they can play music from every decade. Covers everything, huh? Everything. <laughs> he, this guy can play five, six, seven instruments, and they wow. do some Latin. He has m multiple different bands within his bands, but this is a 10-piece band. Really? Really, really wow. sounds cool. Uh, no Shoes Nation. B Peter actually heard down at the launch at the Ham Shipyard, and it would have been really cool to do it last year because we were going to promote it as Come See hear Kenny Jesney music for free. <laughs> Instead of paying it, Gillette was like five days later, he was gonna do two shows down there. And then uh, we had already decided to close with Doo-Wop DeVille. Any band that ends up having to go indoors, and in 19 they did because of the heat wave that we had, uh, we always offered them an opportunity to come outside. And they had kind of great lights and everything going on behind. It's kind of like having an acapella group uh, doing doo-wop music, but backed by a, backed by a five-piece professional band. So it was really cool with the lights and everything like that. So we thought that would be nice because the sun goes down about 7.30 by the last concert. So anyway, that's our schedule for this year. I think everybody will uh, really enjoy. We really hope uh, some of the younger people start coming out. We get, you know, different stuff. And I'm sure Kenny's got some more to add. He's sneaking back. No, just one thing. I'm trying to cut you off. Yeah, um, yeah he is. There's a new bridge, thanks to CPA funds, and we're going to have a new sign up and ready to go for our first concert. So that's exciting news. So. Thank you, CPA. Oh, yeah, CPA funding was amazing. And uh, awesome. the uh, folks that, uh, for those of, that don't know it, out in Cable Land, and for you folks here, the Riley Field, All Weather Track, Nisby Bandstand area, that entire complex was all built with private funding. That was not done with town funding at all. Um, and the new entrance, we applied for the CPA funding, and it is considered open space and recreation. So it was built, um, Glenn LaPointe did it, he was the lowest bidder, he put it, it finished I think like April of last year. Um, it is fantastic, it can take the largest ambulance, we made sure it fitted, you know, was fitted for that, it can take uh, anything. <laughs> no, 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 we've been very lucky, Jeez. I think we've had an ambulance up there once. <laughs> um, but uh, again, we do want to remind folks, because it is on here, for the town bylaws, this isn't just something we say, dogs are not allowed. We were starting to have problems up there um, with people not paying attention to them. Again, we paid a lot of money for those away with geese lights that the town departments are now three years later asking, oh, can we have the information no geese, that they no got dogs. three years ago? Yeah. So the away with geese lights are amazing. The geese were on the very first soccer field as you come in. No geese allowed either. We have, we have no geese, <laughs> no geese, goose, geese, gaggle, poop right. up here <laughs> at all. That's why we don't, that's why we didn't want dogs in there. We don't want well, put your blanket down and sit in it. So, However, they will be selling hot dogs. Yeah. yeah so yes. Will the Lions Club the Lions be set Club up? The Lions Club will be selling their hamburgers and hot dogs and snacks and drinks and everything as they usually do. And Cream will be up there with his traveling ice cream cart. Awesome. Kind of a, kind of a <laughs> well, simple, simple way of doing things. The Lions Club, when they originally started out, what, probably about 15 years ago, um, they were barely breaking even. Now it's their biggest fundraiser. Awesome. And, and people start coming at 4.30 wondering why they're not cooking yet. <laughs> Well, so it'll, it'll be fun, and um, we will be getting our handicap. I've already been in contact with John Stone. He gives us all the handicap signs and everything we put up there, cover them on Sunday nights, and uh, awesome. we still don't have enough handicap parking. So anyway, well, but the bridge is beautiful. It'll allow people to, you know, we can keep the gates closed. It's still four, four feet wide. You can still get a wheelchair through it, and then you can open it up when you have traffic, whichever you want. So okay. very, we, it's looking nice. The sign's going to be... Similar to Griffin's, but it's going to be amazing when it's put up. So, we'll thank, look you. Into it. thank you, Jan. And Terrific. Thank you. And thank, you. thank you. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. It's a piece of Americana. Really I like it. So yeah. Abby did not. Awesome. Okay, next thank up is thank discussion. You. Thank you. Juneteenth. Okay. So, let's see. As you uh, may or not may not be aware, Juneteenth is one of the oldest nationally celebrated uh, commemoration of the ending of slavery in the United States. On June 19, 1865, a Union general rode into Galveston, Texas, to announce that the Civil War had ended and slaves had been freed. So, with that being said, in July of 2020, Governor Baker signed into law a declaration that June 19th, excuse me, Juneteenth of each year. Uh, be recognized as a holiday in the Commonwealth. This year, Juneteenth falls on a Saturday and is to be observed on Friday, June 18th, 2021. 
Now, while it is the intention of the town to observe Juneteenth this summer, the implement, implementation of a new paid holiday would be a mandatory subject of bargaining with various town employee unions. With that said, the town will agree to grant all bargaining unit employees a paid holiday for Juneteenth 2021 as a one-time non-recurring holiday. By granting this holiday, the town reserves all of its rights to bargain over the implementation of the day as a permanent holiday. The town in no way intends to set precedent in this decision, does, does intend to bargain with each union individually at a later date. As the holiday approaches, my office will send out official notice of the holiday to all employees. Can we do that tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> if you have any questions regarding this, I will reach out. Uh, so basically, in, and we've checked with most towns around us, there's very few that are not recognizing this. This is a, you know, it's a, a recognized holiday and we should treat it as such. It, it's an important day. Um, so we will close town hall um, this year on Friday. Um, and uh, going forward, you know, we'll observe it. Uh, we've already bargained it with a few of the units, and we'll bargain it with the rest of them. But um, I think we'll also, obviously, um, the few people that aren't in a unit will also benefit from it. Okay. You don't need to vote for us or anything tonight? Just no, I do not. I just wanted to let you guys know you. and make everybody aware. And also just let everybody know that, you know, it is Juneteenth, and, um, you know, we should all be aware of it and keep that in, in mind. So next is discussion on forming an inspectional services department. Um, yeah, as, as I think it's a, as, as you can see by some of the subject matter that we've discussed earlier, and just with my observations after a year here, um, the the workflow or uh, in communications amongst the departments. Uh, it didn't seem to be, or it didn't seem to be happening at all. There seemed to be complaints that would come in and fingers would be pointed towards other departments, but there was a lack of communication or connecting those departments with one another. Uh, there was no follow through, and uh, it's just the, the way the system was. It was, it was just not um, organizationally, it wasn't optimal. Uh, the past town that I worked in and where I had actually started off was in an inspectional services department, and I had, um, you know, sort of grow, grew that department while I was there into um, a much bigger department. Uh, but the system that we were, used worked very well. Um, it was a system of communication uh, between most of your land use departments. And so basically it starts off you know, with a, um, an inspectional services director. Um, that person would be the uh, administrator and the coordinator of the health department, the zoning department, and the building department. Um, what this allows for and what this will facilitate will be communication amongst those departments as well as um, planning department and the conservation department. So in my vision of this, we would um, make Marty our health director, current health director, our um, inspectional services director, and he would follow through with the day-to-day -day operation of all the um, of the zoning board, or the zoning officer, the building inspector, um, the health department, and then making sure that as complaints or permits or licenses are are filed, that all the departments are communicating and discussing any issues that are, are amongst that and that they, they're followed through from beginning to end. So ultimately it creates a, you know, a better user or customer service experience and it ensures that, that these things don't fall behind or fall into some sort of void where um, things escalate to a point that people are very heated and, and upset about something. Um, whether it's lack of getting an inspection, lack of getting a result on a complaint, or um, just the ball being dropped in a, in a permit not being an issue. Uh, so what I would recommend that we're going to do, what we would like to do is, um, as, you, as you're all aware, the building commissioner left. Um, we've separated with them, and I think this going forward, we would have our inspectional services director, like I said, it would be Marty. Um, we will, I've discussed with our current provisional building inspector, uh, James Banda. He is um, one test away of being licensed to be a building inspector, and then he has several more tests if he wants to become a building commissioner. But James, uh, Jim has agreed um, that he'd like to work full time. So we would have 
him as our um, building inspector. We retained zoning enforcement and <coughs> administration through uh, Marion Wong Ryan. Um, and I would take over the responsibilities of the co building commissioner for now. And those are really the, um, those responsibilities are sort of oversight of the final okay on um, compliance state, you know, with um, when the liquor licenses that we approve, um, all of those facilities need a sign off from a building commissioner. It's a requirement of the state. Um, there would be review of any issues or anything that maybe that, um, a final review, I guess, of anything that the building inspector approves or that the zoning inspector approves. Now, um, what I would recommend is we do this on, on a trial basis and, and we'll review it in December and see if this is working. I think what my goal here, and I've talked to Jim Bander about, is for him, um, we would give him um, uh, an increase in pay for his new responsibilities if he passes and when he passes his final exam and he's a licensed building inspector, we'll probably increase him again. And then if he can become building commissioner, we can move him up into the building commissioner. I'll no longer have to worry about doing that. Um, in the interim, we'll um, work out, I'll work out a stipend with Marty for the extra work that he's going to be doing. And I'll request um, that this board issues me a stipend for probably up to two hours of my time that's going to be towards being a building commissioner. Uh, but again, like I said, I would want to review this in December at the end of the year and, and see that it's still working and that, and that we've improved our, our customer service experience. Um, I think a lot of things that we'll see with this, uh, again, will be the ability to track things. We can get back on um, putting our um, online permitting into place and our online ability to, uh, you know, better file for permits and complaints. Um, right now, the system is just not, it's not working very well. So um, if things are still going well in December, we'll probably carry it through into July. And if it's still working after that, hopefully by then, Jim Banda will have received his certificate to be a building commissioner. Uh, but if not, we'll, we'll deal with it and figure out how we're going to go forward then. So that, that's my plan. I think I would want a motion from the board to at least, um, if, you, if, you are, if you think it's a worthwhile endeavor, to go forward with it. And would I'd just have? like to mention uh, 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 Jim Banda. Um, I've dealt with him, but everyone that I've talked to that has dealt with him likes him. And he's been very builder friendly and very customer friendly. So I think, um, I think people will see a change in the building office with Jim in there, and I, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, we've already seen a very will, big change. Today. Yeah. Will we need any further help in the office? I, uh, so we, we may bring on. Um, there is a. Uh, there has been some interest from a, an existing building inspector that we could use once a week if we do need it. But all everything that I'm in, including that. Um, and it would be probably seasonal when we have busier times and slower times. But all this can be done within the existing budget the, of that department. We're not looking for any additional funding whatsoever. Okay. Um, and obviously, I think that's a good idea. We do a six month review, maybe a, a 12 month review, a, a six yeah. and a 12 month yeah. review if we, maybe the motion is catered that way, that way or. Um, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a motion. Uh, do we have a second? I'll second the motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Hearing none. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Next up, discussion on responding to social media posts. Scott, do you want to talk again? Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, it comes up from time to time in, in um, you know, where somebody may post something on Facebook that is just um, factually as far from the truth as can be imagined. And um, I know that we all have our urges to jump right out there and respond to it. And, I, and as a policy, I don't currently. It's not a written policy. It's just my own policy that I've followed, and I have, I've always cautioned gentlemen on, on engaging and going down the rabbit hole with anybody on Facebook also. But I do think it's important that at times, um, you know, some information that out, that's out there is, is just, um, 
it, it's so far against what we all know is it should be put out there. And I think that I'd like to have um, the ability to answer that stuff and a you know a statement from this office or from the selectman office or from the town manager's office that would go out in response and it would not to be to engage and to continue a response it would just be a simple statement of fact on what our position is um, I, one of the you know a town meeting in the, within the budget we um, had approved to have a um, another administrative um, assistant or, or actually I think it won't be an administrative assistant but somebody who's going to take over the administrative functions from Nancy um, for um, the conservation and for um, zoning and as well as a, a website content manager and I think um, it would also be actually full on social media content where stuff would come out of this office that would be in reply um, statements they could be you know the press statements that I may put together that we would post and then other information we've already discussed and we're working with Wayne to revamp the whole website um, again the whole idea of it is to create a positive customer service experience that if somebody wants to get on there and find information they're finding what they need easily um, but it will also be you know coordinated so that whatever we're saying that we're all aware of, um, that we're all in agreement, um, that it's all factual and um, consistent. So that's my plan. Um, I think I probably need some feedback on that or some, you know, okay. know how you guys feel about. Any, any feedback I, I think, from the board? I think the towns should have been more active on social media years ago. In fact, we've been pushing it since at least 2018. So I applaud it. It does need to be done smart and systematic a lot, not just reactionary. spur of the moment, yeah. reactionary to things. So, yeah, would, I'm all for it. Will there be any expansion of social media to different Abs platforms? Absolutely. Not? I think we have to look into reaching as wide an audience as we can. Um, it'd certainly be nice to reach a... Um, to, to get out and be able to reach a younger audience too yeah. and engage them. Um, I was going to say right now, so, uh, Facebook is going to reach us in this room, but it, the, yeah. the younger Instagram generation is going to, yeah, Instagram is we are looking at a different thing. I so see no reason why Scott and Sue don't make TikTok videos. <laughs> <laughs> at least weekly. Yeah. We, we'll discuss that. <laughs> But no stipend for that. There may be an no stipend. <laughs> I'm sure Marty would do it. <laughs> Actually, Alex Hagedy will probably come in as well. He'd probably like uh, to be on, you know, right? Alex? Oh, for sure, absolutely. I don't believe I need a motion on that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next up is the vote to approve auction of surplus <coughs> land parcels as approved by town meeting vote of Article 10 of the May 2018 annual town meeting. Yeah, so these particular parcels, so they're, they're, as we've been discussing, um, there's going to be a, there'll be an auction coming up, and actually on the 28th at our next meeting, the auction company, as well as um, our treasurer, collector, Sonia Hodge, will be here, and she's going to explain the process. It's been a lot of work, and it's a long time coming, but um, she's done a, a, a lot of really good work on getting this together. Tonight, um, all we're discussing is several parcels that were town-owned parcels. They're not foreclosure parcels. So most of the parcels that we're auctioning were uh, foreclosure. Uh, these particular ones were just ones that were uh, town-owned parcels, and then we so we need a vote, uh, and, and we need you to sign this particular to just these these parcels. Okay. How many lots are there? There's four. So, but there's many more, and, and we'll discuss that next week on what the other ones are. So the four parcels right now, you're looking for a vote. Yep. So as you can see, it's a uh, Bang Street. There's a parcel on Chestnut Street, um, Diane Circle, and 930 Washington Street. It Do you looks, have that in the packets? No. no. I don't think no. any of us have that. Do we have it? Oh. it? It's probably mixed in somewhere with the one I gave out. So there was a supplemental one. 
and I know the signing one in here. So, you want me to just read them off? I'll read them if you want. All right. So as a parcel of land there are known and numbered as 168 Bang Street, shown as lot 172 on Town Assessor's map 23, consisting of 0.18 acres of land more or less conveyed to the town by deed of Greenwood Cushing dated March 30th, 1871, and recorded in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Book 373, page 282. So Possibly that's that um, little building that we're storing. Yeah, I guess it used to be... The water department. Yeah, so we're actually thinking that that probably net us a decent amount of money. Um, you know, it's, it's obviously an existing structure, um, can be rebuilt, reused. Um, they can go for a special permit for pre-existing non-conforming use probably. Um, Next one, parcel of land situated on Chestnut Street, shown as Lot 32 on Town Assessor's Map 57, consisting of 0.31 acres of land more or less conveyed to the town by deed of North Abington Cooperative Bank, dated July 19, 1966, and recorded in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Book 3310, page 589. A parcel of land situated on Diane Circle, shown as lot 37 on town assessor's map 13 consisting of 0.46 acres of land more or less conveyed to the town by deed of the boston five cent savings bank dated october 27 1978 and recorded in the plymouth county registry of deeds book 4759 page 083 again i'm not sure whether that one will be uh buildable lot or not but there is a possibility i know we we had reviewed a lot of these um, about a week ago, myself, Jim Banda, um, and the um, attorney that's working on this for us, and the auctioneers. Um, so some of these actually are pretty good pieces of land. Um, parcel 4 is a parcel of land known and numbered as 930 Washington Street, shown as Lot 36 on Town Assessor's Map 39, consisting of 0.27 acres of land, more or less, conveyed to the town by deed of Erastus M. Nash, trustee under the will of Thomas A. J. Hunt, dated April 20th, 1896, and recorded in the Plymouth County Registry of Deeds, Book 717, page 347. Um, Again, this was a parcel that, although it's very small, it, it is possible that it is a pre-existing non-conforming parcel that was never um, in, in common ownership with the parcels around it and could actually be a buildable lot. Uh, that being said, I think it's all, I think it was a tree, tree department, maybe owned it at one time. It was a, that's why it's a town parcel. Um, I hear there's a lot of rocks out there. Oh, there, there was a small building there at one time, was I think, it? yeah. So, again, these, you know, we'll, you know, we'll probably get more um, discussion on that next week when um, the auctioneers are here. Are any of these buildings or land being used now by the town in any sort of which way? Bank Street is currently being used as storage. Um, storage for uh, records and stuff. And my, my thought would be we will remove... Um, the stuff up there that just needs to be disposed of and shredded and then the records that we do want to keep and some of them are historic documents we're going to move to town hall okay so i think what we'll do is we'll create a space over in our office in the selectman office probably over in my office um, where we can put in conditioned storage we'll we'll put up some shelving uh, put them over there and create another office space um, just putting up a petition wall the there is no other room here at town hall currently um, unless we were to take away one of our meeting rooms but there is a good amount of storage there there's a, a, a or a good amount of documents there that we do want to preserve and protect they're not in the best condition over there that building is you know not condition controlled uh, climate controlled so uh, it is important to get them over here, and then we'll we'll start looking towards the future on what we have to do if the um, you know the project at, at the fire station project is as that goes forward. If it's here in Glenowitz, hopefully we can do something um, as part of that project or a future project. Um, and they're all free and clear to sell. There's nothing holding them back. There's no issues with any lands. No. No. These are all these are all good to go. 
not a PV five hundred one summer street. Just really quickly, do you have to go through a big process of that? Like the Chestnut Street is near Woodsdale School. So does it go through a big permits and everything of what? We're just selling land. Who, but but I mean, who's going to build on it? it what will, they, they'll be subject to whatever they want because what they'll be subject to permitting like anybody else would be. Okay. yeah the, the zoning doesn't they don't get a free ride on anything it's buyer beware really okay uh, but if yeah whatever they wanted to do on it they they would have to go through a soup to nut zoning okay i just hear a lot of arguing of building in summer street and it's, it's the owner's land they can build so i just want to make sure nothing gets put near the school too close you know i'm not saying that they won't be able to build on it i'm just saying that they'll have to go through permitting for it well, right but <laughs> if it's a buildable lot yeah thing for the school and the kids yeah okay thank you thank you all right so there's those four parcels of land like you said they're all free and clear this would be a move forward yeah, and the only reason this one had to be done separately than the other ones that are already approved um, is because this this is town-owned land directly. The other properties were all just foreclosures okay. that we, we ended up with. Yep, right up. Hi. Um, Roberta Delaney, 96 Jennings Drive. Um, I was just asking, is this going to be like a private auction like you did before? Nope, this is going to be Sorry. very public. And so the next yet. step of this and our next meeting, the auctioneers will be here and they're going to go over the process, but this will be, um, it'll be posted on our website. We're actually going to do as much advertisement as we can because obviously that'll yeah, that's what get us the saying. highest price. I'm but sure the neighbors would like to know. Yeah, no, I mean, we're going to, in, in some cases, uh, depending on the parcel, some parcels are, are probably um, less likely to be a value to anybody other than the direct right. abutters yeah. so we'll reach out to them um, the for instance the bank street parcel would be of interest to a lot of different people so we'll do yeah. a lot more advertising on that particular one okay. but the whole process will be public it'll be on our website it'll be throughout all of our social media I don't know if TikTok will be ready by then um, but we do well, have I'm sure some, I can figure out we do have some um, special outfits for the selectmen to wear when they're on TikTok for that so yeah. we're looking forward outfits? to that yeah I think I got enough outfits don't worry yes you do <laughs> anyways <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we would need a, a, a uh, just a approval. motion to endorse it, I guess. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve um, auction of surplus land parcels as approved by town meeting vote of Article 10 of May 2018 annual town meeting. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right, motion passes. Uh, next up is vote to approve commercial garage license renewals. Uh, typically, uh, Mr. Chairman, we do these uh, by page. Okay. And if anyone has any uh, reason to abstain, we'll accept one. So on the first page, if we could do everything except LA Auto Body, okay. I would make a motion to approve everything on page one except LA Auto Body. Motion, do we have a second? Can we just make sure these motions are contingent on our paid taxes? Uh, that's already been, um, I believe Nancy makes sure the well, she put She did put a note on yeah. that. So vote to approve the attached list of commercial garage license renewals pending receipt of all paperwork, satisfactory inspections, and up-to-date taxes. So that would be Alex's motion. That's it. With okay. the exception of LA Auto Body and Repair. With the exception. All right, so we have a motion and a second. I'll second it. All right, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so. I'll make so a motion to approve LA auto body and repair, contingent on all uh, approved paperwork and paid taxes. All right, motion, do we have a second? Second. A motion and a second, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, we'll go to the second page. Uh, be looking for a motion for South Shore Cycle Parts through Whitman Body Works, Inc. Make a motion we approve those licenses based on uh, contingent on paperwork and paid up taxes. And inspections. And inspections, thank you. I'll second that motion. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. It's unanimous. Okay. 
Next up is the purchase and sales for Glenowitz Way. So this is the property that was approved um, at town meeting. We approved uh, to buy it, hopefully for the um, for the new fire station project. However, it's a great piece of property. It's on our campus. It's uh, really uh, useful to no one but us. But um, we'd like to make sure that we we wrap it up. It it is a um, it is a, a dry piece of property. It's six point six acres. Um, and really, I just need you guys to vote to um, endorse the purchase and sale agreement. We won't be purchasing it right away. This gives us the opportunity to get up there, do the explorations we need to make sure that, you know, soil samples, um, that we can get the, you know, if we need alternative access, that we, you know, that we can check the topography and, and make sure that that'll work. Um, there are contingencies in this, and the, the closing's not actually probably till 2023, 2024, but this is just the purchase and sale so we can start the process okay um, any discussion from the board no I'll make a motion that we approve the purchase and sale for Glen of Toy property a second. Second. motion and a second uh, any further discussion all in favor aye, aye. opposed it's unanimous all right uh, next is town manager requests for buyback of one week vacation time yeah, so I have. Before we get into this, I just want to make sure that should we be doing this in executive session? The purchase and sale? No. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> talk, talking about an employee's contract uh, or negotiations. Uh, no, I mean, you know, if you guys want to say no, you can say no. You can <laughs> by contracts, public document, it's out there, so it's not really a negotiation. It's, um, I I have no no desire to do it in executive session so uh it's just it's quite simple i know that you know the the contract my contract allows me to carry over two weeks um i don't wish to carry over two weeks it was it very difficult if i do carry it over to use up the time that i do have plus i'd like to carry over one week um it's going to be impossible for me to use the time this year in you know between um what we're trying to form the inspectional services department um, obviously what's happened over the past year and the fact that my um, administrative assistant your administrative assistant is going to be out of the office for the remainder of the year so it's not something that I would um, normally do I do like to use my time if I can but uh, carrying over two weeks is just exasperates the issue next year so um, again like I said it's a Something that I normally wouldn't be looking to do, but in this particular case, I still have um, one week that I will carry over, and I do have seven um, seven hours or a day of personal time that I will use between now and the end of the year. Okay. Okay. And between COVID and everything else going on in town, I mean, I'd, I'd be in favor of this. Yeah, I have I no yeah. problem uh, okay. this year because of the situation, but it's not something that we would want to see every year. No, I prefer yeah. to use my time too. We'd like you to use yeah. your time. I, I, and not to mention you call me anyways. <laughs> yes. But if you're not I, in the I office, understand. you know. I do have concerns about the precedent it'll set, not not so much for you for next year, but for people coming to your office and say, wait a minute, I, well, I we mo Most of the contractual you. obligations that we have with the unions allow for this. Right, but yours doesn't. Allows to Which was that. negotiated. Right, correct. In good faith, so. So, right. and entertain a motion. I'll I'll approve a mo I'll I'll make a motion. Uh, town manager request for buyback of one week vacation time. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. So said three two. Motion passes. Okay. So next up will be the town manager report. All right. Well, there isn't much left to talk about, but let's see if I can find it. All right. So we um, initiated the bargaining process with the clerical unit at this time. 
Um, after that, we still have DPW manages unit remaining. Uh, and then we have to get back on with to finish up the uh, fire and police. Because um, as you know, we only did a one-year MOU on those. Uh, the police chief search committee um, will be having their third meeting this week. It's moving along well. Uh, Superintendent Schaefer and Chief not all will be meeting with the committee to uh, discuss what they think is important and what sort of uh, things we should be looking for in our uh, new chief. We received 29 applications, so that was very good. We got a uh, very good response. Um, we have security cameras are up and running at Island Grove now. Uh, they proved to be quite effective the first night that they were up and running. <laughs> apparently there were some kids out there having a party and a bonfire. So um, they are monitored over at the police station now. It is uh, supposed to be closed from dusk, dusk till dawn. dawn. So, um, you know, uh, we're, we're watching now. Uh, again, I'm working with Sonia on the auctions. Uh, you'll meet with Paul Zikos from um, Zikos Auctioneers next week, uh, or excuse me, in two weeks, and uh, we'll review that process. Um, working on with Marty on putting together the um, Inspectional Services Department. Uh, on July 7th, Judy Barrett of Barrett Planning Group will be meeting with the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, they're going to meet, um, it's going to be a Zoom meeting mostly for the uh, ease of getting everybody uh, together for that meeting, but it'll also be out there that uh, anybody who wants to watch will be able to watch. I, I would recommend um, if anybody who's interested in affordable housing and the creation of, and as you know, some other topical issues that they'll discuss, and, you know, to a point with um, 40B and stuff like that. Um, Judy is very knowledgeable and very helpful, and hopefully she'll end up, um, you know, as a consultant for the Affordable Housing Trust. So that, that will get posted, um, and we'll get it out there on the website and get that link out for anybody who's interested. Um, again, like, like I said, we're, we're, um, we're getting back to work on the online permitting. Uh, it's important to me to see that that's up and running. I kind of, um, you know, I, I like the idea that people have the access to whether it's filing for a permit, filing a complaint. Um, I'd like to get licenses on there and some other things that people can do at their convenience from home. Uh, I have some meetings with the solar company next week that uh, they're looking for some options around town. Um, I know that there was some talk prior to me getting here on some different spots that they were interested in. So. Um, We'll see what they have to offer and what they're looking at. And I had discussions today with a company that's um, looking to help us out with our uh, landfill and capping the landfill. So we're going to have some future discussions on that and see where that goes. And the only other thing, and Sue can maybe help us or give us a quick update on where we are with the American Recovery Plan Act. Um, so. I had a meeting on Thursday. They paid basically telling us what we can spend it on, but not really telling us when we're getting it and what the pr parameters are on how we can use that money, whether it's right away or you have to get it approved. Um, we did have to apply for it, which we did not know. Um, we just found that out on Thursday. So um, we applied for the money. And while I'm talking about that, we're, we just got our fifth reimbursement approval from the Plymouth County Cares. So we have two checks that we're waiting on, which will give us $1.8 million back in reimbursements on what we've spent so far for um, COVID-related expenses. And with his talk on the inspectional services permitting thing, we're also getting um, iPads for it, which just came up today. I approve, sorry. <laughs> what? For the um, the inspectors to have, so it's like real time on the scene. You're in pro you're approved and, and, a, and a vendor or a customer can go on and say, oh, he proved me right on the scene, you know? So they'll know where they stand with their e-permitting. Okay. That's it. Yeah. Anything from the board? I'd just like to remind everyone um, that at our next meeting, we will be doing the annual appointments. 
And if you're interested in applying for one of the positions, it's on the front page of the website, I believe. And the application is there. You can fill it out online and send it in to the town manager's office. And I encourage people, especially a lot of people that have a lot of things to say on Facebook, uh, get involved if you want. There's a lot of positions that will be up for reappointment. This is the annual reappointment or appointment of all the boards and committees. So uh, I urge everyone to uh, look at it and pick a position. Anything <coughs> further? <coughs> I'll entertain a motion. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Motion is adjourned. <laughs>